So last month, I applied for the PPP loan, Paycheck Protection Program. And then I got approved. Then at the beginning of May, uh, I was able to sign the DocuSign documents, the loan docs, and give them my direct deposit information. And then I was waiting and I started to do a little research and then I withdrew my application. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly why I decided to withdraw my PPP application. And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you what I recommend you do if, if you got a PPP loan and you're also getting unemployment insurance. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy, drinking my Nespresso, sporting my Rideshare Guy shirt. Let's get into it. All right, so background. Background is, um, I was pretty fired up because I applied for the PPP loan. I looked at my, you know, my bank statements, added them all up, divided it by 12, said, okay, I made $8,000 a, a month. Eight times 2.5 is $20,000. I thought, wow, and it's 100% forgivable as long as I pay myself. It seemed like a no-brainer. So I applied, and like a week later, um, I got a notification that I'd been, you know, tentatively approved. And then a few weeks later, I got this DocuSign document to sign the loan agreement. And I thought, wow, this is pretty great, you know. And um, they even asked for my direct deposit information. And then I did a little research and the rules changed. The rules changed. So let's start with that. Why did I withdraw my application? Well, I did it because the rules changed and I felt like I would have gotten hurt. So number one, how did the rules change? Well, when I applied, I did not have to uh, provide any kind of tax return. So drivers, you, me, anyone who's a driver and has done a tax return, you realize we get to write off a tremendous amount. We've got the massive uh, mileage deduction and we just put on a ton of miles and that really decimates our income, which is great because we pay very little in taxes. But if, um, if you're getting a loan based on the tax return, it's gonna be very little amount. But initially, um, you could apply for a PPP loan and no tax return uh, was required. You could um, provide bank statements, you could provide 1099s, you could create a, a payroll ledger, and that was all, all good. And as I said, I got approved. But then, as I did my research, I realized that no longer could you apply uh, without providing a tax return. And specifically, they want a Schedule C. So as you can see right here, this is right on the Lendia website. It says 2019 Schedule C, which is now required. If you haven't filed a Schedule C, you must complete one and submit it with your 1099 miscellaneous. So I thought, hmm, well, I applied, I've been approved. That seems like uh, that's okay. You know, I got, I got in before the cutoff. That's what I thought. So number two, well, how much is forgivable? And this is where I decided to withdraw because I watched some videos on YouTube, like you do, and uh, this one woman's video kept popping up and I watched it. And she said that in order to calculate how much is forgivable, you have to take <laughs> Schedule C, line 31, and that's your net income. You have to divide it by 52, multiply it by eight, and that's as much as you're gonna be able to uh, claim as forgivable in terms of the payroll. And payroll had to be at least 75% of it. And there are other things you could write off, but I started to, to do the math. And let me show you an example of what that would look like. So what you see here at the top is my $20,000 loan amount. But let's say for an example, my net income, my line 31 Schedule C was $10,000, okay? So you take that 10,000, you divide it by 52 weeks in a year, and you come up with $192 per week. Then to, multi to figure out the forgivable amount, you multiply that by eight weeks or two months, and that's only $1,500. So then we take the 20,000 less the 1,500, and look at that, $18,461.54 is unforgivable. So basically, what that means is I would have to pay that money back in two years. Now granted, it's at 1% interest, and I suppose if I needed the credit, you know, that's still not so bad, 
but I don't, and I just didn't want that, you know, heavy on my shoulders. So when I saw that, I said, that's it. So I, I contacted the underwriter and I said, is this true? He said, yes, and that was it. And I said, I withdraw my application. Number three, the deadline to return money. So there's a lot of people who are, uh, got, got, actually got their money and then the rules change and they're like, oh my God, I don't want the money. How can I return it back? Well, there, well, there was a, a grace period all the way up until May 18th, May 18th. So, so what you can see right here from their own website, uh, the SBA, Small Business Administration, initially it was May 14th and then they extended it to May 18th. And then you can see your entrepreneur magazine on online on May 18th said today's the official deadline. So hopefully if you fell into that category of wanting to return your money, you were on top of the deadline. Um, and if you haven't, then you just got to talk to, you know, your bank or whoever you worked with and um, find out how you do that. And you might have to pay some kind of a penalty to do it. But of course, okay. So number four, what to do if you've got the PPP loan and you got the PUA, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. So basically, you're getting unemployment money. You're saying you're unemployed. But then you've also got this loan, which is supposed to cover you for two and a half months, right? So <clears throat> um, Harry um, answered this question along with Logan, the uh, CPA on a YouTube live. Um, and I'll tell you exactly what I think. And I asked the underwriter uh, for, for my PPP loan. And he said, flat out, you can't do both. You just can't do both. Um, now you, you can do both, but if you get caught, you might be in trouble. I don't think you're gonna go to jail, but you're probably gonna pay a pretty decent fine. Plus you're just gonna always have to worry about someone, you know, checking you out. So uh, the recommendation then is if you get the PPP loan immediately, um, stop certifying um, for unemployment benefits and stop certifying for two and a half months. And then at the end of the two and a half months, if you're still unemployed, then you can start certifying again to get to get those benefits to continue. So just think of the PPP as two and a half months of unemployment and and you should be completely within the law and you should have nothing to worry about. Okay. So what are the key takeaways? <laughs> Jay got lucky. Really fortunate that I started to watch some um, uh, YouTube videos, and you know I saw things on the, in, in uh, Google News about uh, the rules changing, and um, it was it's important that you know what the rules are, especially when you're talking about a significant amount of money. So um, I just found out about it, and then I withdrew it, and that worked out well. Uh, if you if you got the money and you're now kind of stuck realizing that the forgivable amount is gonna be far less than, than what you thought, you can return some part of the money, you can return all the money, and, and you might just have to pay a little penalty. Not so bad. But in the big scheme of things, um, most people got their stimulus check, a lot of people got the $1,000 EIDL, and virtually everybody is now at least applied or waiting for or getting their unemployment benefits, which is the, the majority of the money. I mean, at a minimum in California, that's $767 a week, and that goes until the end of July. The other key takeaway is that this pandemic is bigger than we thought initially, and the government is working on finding more ways to get money into people's hands so we keep the economy going. And clearly, they got to infuse more money into the economy because we're not going to be able to heat up the economy as quick as possible because of this uh, illness, which is so contagious. Um, even though we're getting back to work, the number of deaths is still growing. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's a really tight balance uh, between uh, the cost of having people die and the cost of people financially you know, decimated by, by the economy slowing down. So stick in there. You know, soon we're gonna have the option to have to decide if we're gonna go back to work uh, because um, demand is gonna start coming up as the economy starts to pick up. So it'll be interesting to see what we all decide. We'll keep you up to date here. If you've not subscribed to our channel, by all means subscribe. I wanna say thank you very much for watching the video. It's always great to uh, hang out with you. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, click that little thumb up. 
that'll allow more people to see it. You know, it's all based on this algorithm. Um, you go out and have a great day. Be safe out there. This is Jay Crater saying, see you next time.